Hey, what is up, you sexy beast? Hold on, Mario Tristan here, and I'm bringing you Ghostly Advice, a weekly advice series. This one I'm actually doing solo, so my email's in the description below if you guys ever want to email me about any questions you have, and I'm actually going to get right into it. So, first email is very, very long, but it basically summarizes that he walks home with his girlfriend. However, his ex-girlfriend and her sister always interrupt them and they, they're always there and they're always next to him and they're always trying to disturb their relationship basically and he doesn't want to save off because then they're, uh, <laughs> they'll tell their parents or their teacher like, oh my god, you said a bad word or whatever, which he like sounds like fourth grade, right? And so... I feel really bad for this guy, and also he talks about this happens at school, and his girlfriend doesn't mind it so much, however, he really dislikes it, and I can't blame him, and so I'm going to get right into it, guys, so what I would say to you, bro, is you really need to sit your ex-girlfriend down and have a talk with her about this, have, ask her why she's doing something like this, don't cuss at her, don't say anything like that, because apparently she'll get you in trouble for it, which is stupid, I feel sorry for you, bro, um, anyway, so ask her why she's been doing something like this, and what her motives are behind it. And then after you're done talking, figuring out why she's doing something like this, then, only then, you can figure out how to make it stop. You said you've tried different routes and other stuff like that. <laughs> Dude, this is a very re unique situation. That's why I figured I'd answer it. So, if I were you, what I would do is after you're done talking to her, I would tell her to stop. Be, be sincere about it. Be like, may you please not do that. It's very annoying. And uh, I'm sorry, but if you have any problems with me, please address me about it. I really like spending time with my girlfriend, and I would not like you to disturb that time. And she may not understand because she's a very immature girl. However, um, when it comes to other things you can do is... Man, I, I don't want to say tell your parents, but if, if that doesn't work, if the sincere strategy doesn't work, then you can ask your parents about it and ask them what you should do because you've tried different routes... And this isn't a huge deal, but the thing is, bro, is if you don't make it, just like bullying, if you don't make it look like a big deal, then it won't be a big deal. And she'll see that and she'll be like, oh, I guess they don't mind too much. Then, you know, she'll stop seeing you get irritated and she'll stop getting that little kick out of you, you know. So if I were you, you can take the first approach. If that doesn't work, then just ignore her. Ignore her completely. Just act like they're not even there. 100%. You and your girlfriend talk about it. And just complete walk and talk like nothing ever happened. And uh, they'll eventually stop because they'll be like, oh, damn, it's not working anymore. It's not making him mad. And I think that's a very, very good idea in my opinion. I know, right? Narcissistic, right? I'm going to get right into the second email. And so this one's actually pretty funny. There's this girl I really want to rail. We, ha we have talked about it a few times. We've never found a place to go. But anyways, um... <laughs> I don't want to be a one pump chump. We're both 15. Another question is, how do I wrap it up right, if you know what I mean? We don't need kids at this age, but if you recommend me not to rail her, then there's something else sexual I could do to her until I'm ready to rail her. Thank you so much. So, I really hope you guys have done all the foreplay necessary to get the girl to, you know, have enjoyable sex with you. Because you don't want to regret your first time. You don't want her to regret her first time either. So, if I were you, I would... You know, go teach her the ropes, basically, winky face. So, you know, start with making out and stuff. And this this happens, this should be on the day you guys actually have sex. And also, you guys should do foreplay before you guys actually have sex, like, days before, if that makes sense. So, like, have done all this stuff with her before you guys just do all this crazy sexual stuff in one day, if that makes sense. So, um, anyway, start with, you know, kissing and then, like, touching and then, like touching more winky face and then like oral and then when you guys are actually ready assign a day literally assign a day and where you guys will be completely alone you just want it to be her and you no one can walk in no one can disturb you guys your parents aren't going to be home it's not going to be awkward so you guys are very very comfortable and not anxious now earlier that same day you need to masturbate because i don't know if you're a one pump wonder but um <laughs> It'll calm you down and it'll be a lot harder for you to get off when you're actually having sex. So masturbate earlier that day and then get her over to your house. You can have like candles and cliche stuff and, you know, rose petals. Do whatever you want to do. Make it cheesier or not. However, just make sure you two are alone and get her comfortable, you know, talk. Maybe watch a movie and then start, you know, going in for the kill and uh, start making out with her and then start touching and then go through all this stuff. You guys don't have to do like hand jobs and oral and everything before you guys have sex, but get her warmed up. Get her excited. Maybe play with her a little bit, Winky. Wink, 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 wink. Anyway, um, 
And then, so yes, that's how you avoid the very first two things, finding out a good place and not being a one pump one. And now the last thing he says, you don't know exactly how to wrap it up right now. How to put on a condom is basically you open it and you'll see it fold under and then there's a little pop, right? And pretend you're putting it on your finger, right? you would be able to roll it down naturally. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be the other way around. So when you put it on, um, you can go get these at the drugstore. Do not be embarrassed. Just go throw them on the counter with confidence, buy them, and uh, test it out on something so you don't look like an idiot. Anyway, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open it, find the side that... It's hard to explain how it looks, but so it would roll down naturally. Put it on your tip and then just roll it all the way down to the base as good as you can, and you'll be good to go. Uh, definitely try one out before you actually go and uh, to get ready to have sex with her, but warm her up, be nice, be alone. I think that is a very good way to do sexuals with this girl. So this last email is very funny because it's letting the girl down easy. It's not, it's not the other way around, and that's why I chose it. So hi, I'm 11 years old, and uh, kind of somehow I said I like this girl who insanely likes me. Wink, e face, wink, e face. He sent me those. I've never really met her. I don't really like her. Oh, she says, oh, we really need to meet up sometime. So this doesn't, I don't know if this is exactly a girl. That's the scary part. You're 11. So anyway, so basically I'm trying to, uh, trying to put her down gently. I like winky faces. They added another one after that. I'm like, okay, but she lives about two hour drive from me. And honestly, I really don't know how I said I liked her. Please reply if you can put this on ghostly advice. And there's always this kind of stigma. I know I'm talking very fast this episode. I know there's this kind of stigma with liking a girl and, or maybe not liking a girl and accidentally telling her, you know, like, she's like, I like you. And you're like, me too. And you're like, oh, shit. I done goofed. So, if I were you, bro, let her down, e her, quote, quote, I'm still worried if she's like a dude or not, so I really hope this is a legitimate girl. However, don't meet up with her, her, quote, quote. I don't know. I, eh, I'm, eh, eh. <laughs> so, if I were you, what I would do is, dude, use every cliche in the book. Girls get to let guys down so often that it's finally your chance. You get payback, you get a friend zone, the girl, and thank you, bro, because that is an amazing feeling, and thank you for representing the guy nation and uh, finally letting a girl know what it feels like to be cliched and uh, friend zone. So anyway, use any cliche you can. It's not you, it's me. You know, it, it wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> like, I, I want the best for you and stuff like that, and it just isn't me. So it's like, do whatever you can and just be like, I would just like to be friends. I'm sorry, I value our friendship way too much. I think that's a very, very good way to basically show her what's up and be like, yeah, I don't really like you, but it's not rude at all. That's why girls do it because it's a very, it's not a rude thing to say. It's just kind of how it is basically. So I really hope you guys did enjoy this episode of Ghostly Advice. If you did, do not forget to smash that like button right above the description there. My email's also in the description. Have a great day, and remember the fact that I love you long time.